Hi Goblins, this is Salt Goblin and I'm here today to join the bandwagon and talk about uh, Diablo 4. I played the Diablo 4 open beta and uh, here are my two cents. A bit of details before we start so you get where I'm coming from. Diablo 1 was one of my favorite games as a kid and I played it tons. I did play a fair bit of Diablo 2 as well back in the day. As well as uh, Titan Quest, I really enjoyed Titan Quest when it came out. And by the way, don't buy it on Switch, it's riddled with bugs and unplayable. And then uh, I skipped Diablo 3, and at the moment I have about 200 hours on uh, Path of Exile. And uh, I haven't tried Last Epoch, Epic, Epoch yet, in Epoch, but I am tempted. So I'm not the uh, super master of ARPGs. I would say that I'm quite a filthy casual as with every game that I play. So back to Diablo 4. I did not get into the early beta because I don't really trust Blizzard to make games that I uh, enjoy anymore. That what they do is not really my style. But I did want to try Diablo 4. So I got into the open beta uh, for free. Uh, but due to life in general, I uh, did not get to level 25 because I have shit to do on the weekend. So I did not get to level 25 even with a single character. I played uh, as the sorcerer until level 13 or 14, something like that. I think I could have grinded to reach the max level uh, of the open beta to get the, the better goodies like the wolf uh, backpack or something. I could have done that. I think I had about three hours left on the, the time limit. But uh, I ended up stopping playing and uninstalling the game to make some room on the computer. After I felt like uh, I had seen enough to do this little video. Granted, I didn't see the highest, most difficult combat that the beta could, uh, could offer. So please keep that in mind. Basically, when I realized I wasn't going to buy the game, chasing the exclusive beta item became irrelevant. And then I just stopped playing. So yeah, I'm not going to buy the game. I'm not interested in the game. All right, so uh, let's get started about... Uh, what I like and what I didn't like about the game. First, the graphics and ambience, which is about the only thing that I really, really liked about the game. The ambience is sick. Uh, Blizzard has always knocked it out of the park with that, especially when it comes to the Diablo franchise. The cinematics are great. Your characters look awesome. Uh, the world in general is just amazing to, to look at. Everything about the graphics, to me, is top tier. The animations, the lighting, the small details all around you about the world, about how your character moves, about how your character holds the weapons, how they swing, uh, the, the cities, the villages, the NPCs, the buildings, the, the clutter on the ground. Everything is really, really nice, really well done. Very good uh, graphic designers. <laughs> now, I don't really get why people are impressed with uh, drawing dicks in the snow. It's not like Blizzard or Diablo 4 has invented the mechanic where you can see your character's footsteps. Like, chill, guys. Like, relax. It's not that. I don't know why almost every uh, YouTuber I watched was, was talking about that. <laughs> Anyways, the main story. What do I think about the main story? It's Diablo. If you like dark, moody demon stuff. Uh, now with Big Titty Demon Mommy. If you, if you like demon stuff with cults and sacrifices and churches, and but everyone in the church is evil, uh, you won't be disappointed. So if you like that stuff, then you'll be satisfied. It, it's staying true to its roots, but they changed from a, a Bowser Diablo to a, a Bowserette Diablo. Let's move from the environment and the ambience to the, the gameplay. Let's, let's talk about quest design, I guess. Yeah, the side quests were cool. I think that the that's the best thing they've done so far with the gameplay because uh, side quests kind of such a gamble, right? With every game, is they can always be repetitive or feel useless sometimes, especially in big RPGs. But uh, in this game, in Diablo 4, they felt unique and had a cool, uh, cool. They had a cool little story attached to each of them. They had a little twist. So I really like that. Instead of just go here and do the thing, uh, kill the monster or, or, or bring back the loot. They had a little story with voice acting and a little presentation. I guess that's what I want to say. And that made a big difference. A lot of the how they present the game forces you to relax and take it in. I don't know if they'll do a speed running uh, mode. But uh, it's not Path of Exile. You can't rush through. I guess you can, but for your first playthrough, uh, with the voice acting and the cinematics, it, it makes you, it forces you to get into that mood and into that mode 
So you're playing like a streamlined ARPG, but also you're in it for the experience. But unfortunately for me, because I was trying to rush to get the uh, the open beta loot, right? The the item, the special item, the promotional item, I guess. The carrot on the stick to ha make us uh, test their game for free. I was rushing through because I didn't have a lot of uh, free time. So I, I didn't really get into the mood of the game because of that. Uh, before I move on to talking about combat, uh, if you wouldn't mind, please click on like or dislike on this video now or at the end of the video before you switch to another video or, or, or close YouTube. I'm trying to get better at this YouTube uh, video thing and likes and dislikes are like the only feedback pretty much you can get from viewers except if you take the time to write some things in the comments. So thanks a lot, like or dislike, whatever, but thanks a lot for the, uh, the interaction, the engagement, I appreciate it. All right, back to D4 talk. Uh, so let's talk about combat. Again, the graphics and uh, general animation, the style is on fucking point. Uh, battles, your fights look really cool and actually beautiful. And I was a sorceress, so blasting a group of blasting a group of ghouls with a fireball looks and feels fucking nice when you hit like ten of them and it, and it, the corpse is crispy. Fucking cool. During the fight, you get good, simple info about your enemies and attacks and how much damage you deal. And uh, it doesn't clutter the screen, so that's really good. This appears a bit too fast for me because I brain no quick, but uh, so far really nice. But that I think that's uh, the only thing I like about combat. It looks good and it feels clunky for me. I get that with Diablo, it's always been uh, left click for, for everything. But I found it super annoying that my, my character would either walk when I wanted it to attack or attack when I wanted it to walk. So yeah, I can hold shift, right, the whole time. I can remap controls, uh, which I did, completely remapped everything almost. But after uh, three hours of gameplay, I still felt like I was mostly annoyed whenever a combat got a bit complex just because it wasn't intuitive for me even if it's not super simple maybe because i was playing path of exile recently so i kept getting confused even with the remapping like i'm trying to run away but my character is attacking i'm trying to attack my character moves my range character would move into combat if i forgot to hold shift because i was like doing my 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 actions and drinking my potions the complexity felt nice for a while though, especially at the beginning. I didn't get a single mana potion, so as a sorcerer I had to manage my mana correctly. I couldn't just fucking spam a fireball. But until I got the Hydra spell, then I mostly just cast uh, Hydra and then spam my basic attack while holding shift while being away from all the danger. When there are events or combats from quest, as opposed to just world critter, you have to prioritize the targets that you're attacking and run around a bit dodging attacks, which I feel adds a lot to the genre. Because sometimes with ARPGs, I feel it can usually just become a slugfest of spamming your attacks and your abilities, popping potions while you're immobile, and moving on to the next combat once everything is uh, deleted from the screen. So that's kind of nice that you have to dodge and look where you walk and stuff like that. I do wish there was more dodging and such in this combat. Like walking around in a hurried pace, looking like you gotta go to the toilet real quick, but if you walk too fast, you'll shit your pants is a staple of Diablo games, but I think you can move on from that now, like gaming has evolved, and you can make the gameplay uh, a bit more advanced and more dynamic, I think, with more actions, more dashing, making it faster a bit. <laughs> no fantasy. What I found annoying about combat mostly was the long cooldowns uh, for my unlocked abilities, like the fire shield is like 10 seconds, and the, the shock teleport is like 10 seconds, so that's a bit long. Sure, it forced me to manage the timing better, but I also felt like it slowed down combat a lot. A lot. Talking about slowing things down, let's talk about the pacing of the game, which I mentioned earlier. The cinematics are super good. I mean, it's Blizzard, that's how they all sucked us in with, World, uh, with Warcraft and Diablo and Starcraft back in the day, let's be honest. And I like the in-game lore yes. dumps while you're playing Diablo 4 where you just look at your character talk with the NPCs in the normal gaming view from the top down. The voice acting is really nice, the dialogues are not too cheesy, and like I said earlier, it makes you relax a bit and remember to take your time and enjoy the game, not just rush through. But again, given my limited amount of time window for the beta, I couldn't really do that because I wanted the dog pack thingy. 
talking about dog pack thingy a big part of the games like this is the loot which uh, i felt was very lackluster uh, at least at the early levels i never felt like i got anything exciting from my, from my weapons and my my armor felt mostly like clutter give you 0.5% increased attack speed, 1% elemental resistance, that, that and the gathering around the world, like getting the herbs, I felt like that was not needed in a Diablo game. It forced, again, the game to slow down a bit, if anything. And I don't know what if that's what they're going for. I do feel like breaking down your items when you're done to salvage materials will lead up to cool crafting down the road. I think they probably, knowing Blizzard, will have an interesting crafting mechanic, but I didn't get to experience it, which is my fault because I didn't invest the time in the beta. Uh, the item shops in the game, like in the villages, felt completely useless. There's just nothing to say here about them. There's just three items that suck that uh, cost too much useless wired in the game the one thing about equipment that i would see myself chasing if i were to play the game more like blizzard sponsored video is the transmox going around the world looking for the right piece of equipment to make my character look awesome and unique that's my jam and i saw in one of their demo videos that the same armor can drop in a different style if you get it from a different part of the world so that's really cool and basically all the shitty equipment that you don't need once you salvage it you unlock the look for your character so you can chase the color you can chase the armor style to really customize your, your character uh, so like I said that's my jam but for an MMO actually because a game like this where I'd probably mostly play solo I wouldn't bother much about my looks. I, I wouldn't spend like more than 20 minutes looking for a specific drop in an area. I'm not a gambler in person. Uh, gambling just naturally turns me off about everything. So waiting for something that drops just annoys me. If I know there's like a 1% chance and it drops, I don't get excited. I don't get any rush from getting uh, rare things. Uh, for the social aspect, teaming up with a friend was easy and smooth. Even in the beta, I was pretty surprised. It was a one-click affair, like easier than most games that are fully fleshed out. The XP boost, the 5% XP boost you get from being close to another player is nice and a good motivation. And the level scaling seemed really, really well done and appropriate. We started as a level 10 and 19, I think, or 11 and 19 when we teamed up. But uh, yeah, okay, I don't know if it was good because we actually blasted through the, the game together, which could be a negative for some people, but because it was short on time, I like that. Uh, my friend was playing as a necromancer and we basically didn't have any trouble whatsoever as a necromancer and a sorcerer uh, or sorceress, except with one boss from the main quest, which almost killed me because I wasn't paying attention to my life and uh, what the boss was doing. Actually, the screen was so fucking cluttered with, with monsters and zappy things and, and summoning circles and things happening on the screen that I, I didn't know what was happening. And uh, I was just trying to avoid the boss mechanics with my with my gotta go di diarrhea uh, walk. And I was just basically made sure that my Hydra was up the whole time. I don't know if you can hear that the neighbors just banging on the floor. Okay. In summary, I will probably not bother with the game like I didn't bother with Diablo 3 uh, unless the game gets a huge discount at some point and a friend still wants to play it with me. Or if their seasonal mechanics are neat. Like if there's something every month I can go back to, I might, I might try that. I'm not a story guy. I find that I don't have a lot of time to play games. It's hard for me to get into stories of games because I'm just waiting for the action and I, I, I feel like I sometimes only have one or two hours to play, except when I stream. So I don't want to play story games uh, most of the time. So to me, this feels like a, a streamlined ARPG that is appealing for the masses, appealing for the general public because uh, it looks good but uh, felt very shallow. I feel like besides leaving everybody in the dust in terms of graphics and presentation, the skill mechanics are and loot, there's loot mechanics are too simple for me. For Diablo 4, I wasn't wooed within my three hours of gameplay, and that is usually a sign that I won't uh, enjoy the game uh, later either. If the game doesn't grab me after one hour, given time for tutorials and such, I usually drop it. There's uh, so many games out there and only so little time to try it all. So if I 
not addicted within an hour or two, I'm not going to invest 40 minutes, uh, 40 hours in it. So here's my two cents. I'm hoping to do a bit more of these types of videos on the channel in the future. If you're still here, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, whether you agree or disagree with me. So are you going to play the game? What was your favorite part of it? Let me know in the comments. And finally, if you want to hear more about PC games, make sure you subscribe to this channel. It's super motivating for me to keep going whenever someone new uh, supports me. Thank you very much for your time, everybody. Salt Goblin about Diablo 4. I'll see you uh, on the next video, the next stream, or something like that. Bye-bye!